This week, we're finishing Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morillier, otherwise known as Dolphins or Whales 2. Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines, those swashbuckling ladies who have to work a little harder than expected for their happy ending. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. I'm feeling 22. <laughs> I was a little bit higher than I feel comfortable going, but can you can we get a replay? I'm oh. feeling 22. <laughs> That, that was a little more sad. That sounded very, <laughs> very sad. Well, okay. Welcome to episode 22, our final episode for Daughter of the Forest. I am feeling kind of sad. I feel like the sad tone to that was appropriate. Yeah. Well, this is a very sad book. Yeah. I'm sad to leave it, but I'm also kind of like sigh of relief. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it, it's almost like watching a period drama. Like, yeah. Like a five-part period drama mm -hmm. where, like, it's just so much downtrodden. Like, yeah. is the spinster going to get the guy in the end? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I was on an airplane. Because uh, if you're wondering at the weirdly, vastly oh, improved. We uh, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recording uh, quality. I am alive. She has returned. <laughs> The prodigal son has returned. Prodigal? Prodigal? What? Oh my God. We found another word. We can't <laughs> oh, know. Oh no, God. <laughs> Rob is probably like, oh my God. It is, I don't know how to pronounce it the right way. So we're just going to. We're just going to skip it. That's how we do all the other words. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, but anyway, I was on the airplane. I watched The Empress. Have you seen that? It's on Netflix. Oh, that's the one about the, takes place in Austria? Yeah. Uh, what in do they speak in Austria? German. Is it German? I I hope so. It sounds so gentle. Like when you're listening to it, you're like, this is almost French, but not. I think they also speak French mm. in some places. I could see that. Because some of the words were like, you know, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I probably pissed it off so many people. But you know, the like, the gentle turns of like some of the letters. Um, but weirdly, very good. It was like a period piece, kind of like romancy. I'm on episode like five. I think I stopped at around the second or third episode. Mm, mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I don't know. It's kind of hard because uh, you can't multitask when you're watching it because you have to read the subtitles. That's how I feel about all of the Korean dramas. Oh, I'm my God. K-dramas. <laughs> <laughs> Extraordin uh, the Extraordinary yeah. Attorney Wu. I have not. I oh, it's so that. cute. I it's so soft and gentle, but like fun. It is the most oh. Katie show I have ever seen. Of. Like, That's fair. Yeah. yeah. She has these like moments where she like stares off in the distance and like whale noise starts. I feel that on a soul level. <laughs> You look like there's whale noises going in the back of yeah, your head at some fair. point. <laughs> at <laughs> all times. <laughs> like, where did you go, Katie? Are you on the ocean? Whales. <laughs> oh my God. And dolphins. Do dolphins are whales, right? They're in the, like, the same category together. Because she has dolphins in her little vision things, too. <laughs> I think her brain disappears when we hit the record button. <gasps> wow, all dolphins are whales. But not all whales are dolphins. We are way off tangent. Uh, yeah, we are supposed to be reviewing a book. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Empress on Netflix, decent. Uh, dolphins, dolphins are, are whales. whales in <laughs> Austria. They speak German. Those points concluded. <laughs> Maybe we can proceed. Yeah. Part four. They just got married. That feels like a big thing that we can't just like bypass. It, okay, <laughs> it feels like a big thing, but it's not a big thing in the book. No. Everybody is just like, this is weird, but okay. <laughs> yeah, they all kind of shrug like, all right, what else is, is, yep. he, is Red going to do? Like, yep. we don't agree with anything he's done. Oh, nope. great. He married this bitch. Like, <laughs> yep, we're stuck with her. <laughs> so um, everything is obviously like super Akko in Harrowfield. But, you know, Sorsha obviously can't talk, so she can't explain anything that's going on. Uh, that's very convenient and awkward. And so Ben does his best to kind of, like, explain what's going on. But, like, Ben also doesn't really know what's going on. And so, obviously, things are not going well. Because um, <laughs> Red is on some last-minute trip. And the excuse they came up with is that he's, like, fixing problems with neighbors. It's like, that, that sounds fake. Because it is. I mean, yeah. And I also didn't. I didn't like this part where Red leaves because after how careful he is of yeah. Sosha, this entire time she's been there, like, oh, my uncle's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I maybe he's just a little naive thinking, oh, they get married and everything's going to be okay. But yeah. like, you know, she's going to, she's already been targeted. Mm -hmm. She's going to get targeted again. Yeah. And you're not there to prevent anything. Mm -hmm. It felt really like brash. And I feel like towards the end, when we find out why he actually left and like what happens, it kind of makes more sense. But it's also like such a, not a character, not a character flaw, but like a, out of character move, I guess. It's kind of rando. Yeah, he's very like forward thinking and mm -hmm. reserved and thoughtful. And this was just, oh shit, I. Okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs> okay, bye. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> Not cool. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Sorsha, Sorsha feels this uh, same tension in the house and she kind of just focuses on making the shirts because she's like, nobody really wants to talk to me. Everything's awkward. I'm just going to work on these shirts. I called them shirts instead of sweaters. No, no, oh. no. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. But also, you, <laughs> I nearly lost my shit yesterday when you sent me that picture. Oh, my God. Of the swan. <laughs> and you realized how shitty this task So I was on a walk and randomly came across some swans that were just hanging out in this little pond thing in the park. And uh, these bitches are huge, like ginormous. I did not realize swans were so fucking large. So geese are huge. Like, uh, uh, I know geese are huge, but swans are bigger than geese. I know, yeah. that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, so if you've never, like, if you've seen, a, like, a goose and you thought, oh, shit, that's a big fucking bird. Like, yeah. And then, like, imagine bigger. <laughs> oh, my God. But the first thing I saw when I saw the swan is I took a picture and I'm like, this shit is so fucking big. I feel so bad for Sorsha. Like, how do you make a shirt this large and then six of them out of substance not made to be turned into yarn? Like, oh, these things are fucking huge. I had no idea. Yeah. they're. I mean, they're pretty, though. Yeah. They're very graceful. But uh, apparently they're terrifying. Tasty. <gasps> Really? Yeah, they, they used to be like a delicacy. Like for that's what you oh. used to eat on Christmas dinner. Like was uh that makes was it there in this yeah. Unag served swan or something? Yeah, or someone did. Yeah, Ooh. but also like intrigued, maybe tasty. Well, like <laughs> goose is supposed to be really good too. Hmm, interesting. I feel like you were meant to be like a Victorian lady and like sample all these weird birds. <laughs> Thanks again for that. <laughs> also, I can't okay. even <laughs> deny it. Like. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> this episode's going to be all over the place because, like, we're just frantic energy. Um, but we decided that Jordan is, like, a little graceful, like, Victorian woman. And I'm one of those, like, feral, like, fey child that run around without shoes on and there's, like, branches and shit in their hair. That's our energy. You're the hermit that lives on the edge of the woods. Yeah. And I'm the lady <laughs> of the estate. And we, we come together for, like, for like a tea session every yep. once in a while. <laughs> and I'm just drinking like straight whiskey in my tea glass. And she's like, I'm just going to ignore this. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is fine. This is the nature of our podcast. It's fine. This yep. is how we roll. Yep. Uh, anyway, shirts for swans, bigger than I was expecting it. Uh, but Sorsha thankfully finishes the fifth one. And so she's starting to work on the last one. However, uh, around midsummer, I think it's like the day before or two days before, um, a woman is assaulted and Lady Anne is unable to like negotiate the settlement and figure things out with like the townspeople. And so she does what any trusting sister, a younger sister would do. Um, she calls her older brother for help since this Red is not there. Bitch. Bruh. What the? Mm. Why did you think that was a good idea? <laughs> well, okay. So I think she just, she doesn't understand how truly evil mm -hmm. this person fucker is yeah so she like as any sibling would if you like think you have a good relationship with someone you're like oh they'll, they'll, they'll help solve it like you don't want to believe that yeah. of your family if you have a good relationship with them that makes sense but also like watching while you're reading this you're like lady Anne, i swear to fucking god <laughs> don't bring richard into this uh but of course richard is brought into this and he settles everything and it feels like everything's fine but there's this like really horrible like tension and undertone behind it and then something really happy like horrible does happen um on actual midsummer. So Sorsha was planning on like dipping out of the castle and trying to go see her brothers uh, by like a lake or river nearby. But Lady Anne is like, oh, we should all have a picnic out by the river um, at sundown. And Sorsha's like, yeah, okay, that's like not really a part of my plan, but like I guess I can like slip away and I'll figure it out. Like it'll be fine. Uh, it was not fine. Uh, so they're all sitting down and laughing and eating and things are like super awkward, but everything's fine. And Sorsha's is kind of like, oh, I have to go use the bathroom. Like, excuse me. Uh, and so she dips over to the river and oh, there it is. 
I had no idea where you were going because I forgot about this scene. <laughs> really? And then like I was reading your notes a little bit and I'm like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, this shit. scene, like <laughs> it's about to go down. Oh, this scene is so horrible. Um, well, so it starts on a positive note. So Connor's there and she's like, oh my God, Connor, I'm so sad. They embrace and Connor explains that their brothers wasn't able to make it or that sounded not that right. Was not <laughs> no. It's okay. We'll pretend like it didn't happen. Uh, their brothers couldn't make the flight over, uh, because it's like long and difficult. Obviously they're, did we ever figure out what channel that is between Ireland and England? I don't no. know. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a C. I'll look. Okay, you keep going. I'll look at uh, it. But yeah, long distance for swans, even though they're really big. So I kind of, you know, fact check on this. I feel like they could make it and be fine. Uh, but he's like, oh my God, it's so long and difficult. They weren't able to do it. But he explained after that. So Sorsha has one chance to call them and have them come here when, what is it? The Sea of what? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's oh, called, no. It's called the Irish Sea. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> I'm okay. leaving. I'm I mean, done. I mean, that was that was the first result on on Google. Um, <sighs> there, there is a, a Gaelic name for it, but um, oh, I'm yeah. not even going nope. to attempt that. <laughs> no, we're not no going one to embarrass to ourselves that. like that. Yep, it's the Unag thing all over yeah, again. God, or, sweet. Uh, no, Neve. That was the worst ne one. No, the, what's the one that I messed up really bad? Um, uh, Seamus. Oh, <laughs> shit, fucking Seamus. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to just apologize to uh <laughs> all of ireland or <laughs> every single every single group at, like nation that we bring up and just yeah what, what language do they speak yeah. there people are like what is the u.s education system <laughs> doing to its people uh yeah if you've seen this stuff in florida <laughs> nothing good <laughs> um but yeah anyway i'm just going to continue on so i don't start crying uh we're yeah. not in florida by the way oh nope. yeah they don't God. live in that hellhole <laughs> nope <laughs> We're going to say gay all the time. Gay, 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 gay. <laughs> all of a sudden we're like sued by, uh, what's his name? <laughs> oh, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, Connor. Um, so he kind of explains that she has one chance. So as soon as the shirts are done, um, she just has to, you know, mind speak and he will get them there somehow, but like only one time. So uh, hold that close to yourself. So Sorsha is obviously like really upset about everything and she's like emotional. And so she cries a little bit, um, except the ever watchful Ben, who's like making sure nobody harasses her as she's trying to like allegedly pee. Ben hears her crying and bursts through the bushes and chaos ensues. Uh, Richard and his men burst through too. Cause everybody's like, what the fuck? Who is this like random person? That was my phone. I'm so sorry. Uh, and they all chase after Connor and then, uh, horrible. Richard accuses Sorsha of meeting her spy lover and revealing all of Harrowfield's secrets just days after marrying Red. Okay. This fucked me up. This was bad. However, I will say it's pretty damning. It is. Yeah, like you can't even deny that, right? No. She can't defend she can't defend herself. She isn't speaking to anyone. Like, how do you like if you brought someone who has from another country that's been at war with your country? Yeah for decades yeah, and they're not speaking anything. They're doing shady shit with like sewing mm -hmm. and like has mysteriously like seduced the master of the yeah. house. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, it just like burns though. Cause it's one of those moments that like, you know, the truth, but everyone's like deciding what they think the truth is and you can't do anything to like refute it. Oh, that burns so much. It hurts your soul. Um. So yeah. And also, like, Richard is, like, ex ex scrap. Ex <laughs> we found another word. <laughs> um, exaggerating. There we go. I did it. We made it through. <laughs> Richard is exaggerating the claims uh, to anyone that'll hear. And he's saying, like, oh, I found them in a compromising position. Their clothes were half off. Uh, she's a whore, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so Sorsha is immediately taken into the dungeons and like locked in this really gross cell. There's like rats and bugs and stuff. And Lady Anne a little bit later kind of takes pity on her and she brings Sorsha all of her like spinning stuff so she can keep working. But Lady Anne is kind of like, you bitch, you, you know, married Red, my son, dear son. And then you were like cheating on him with a spy. Like, 
okay. dug your own grave. <sighs> I thought, I thought that bit about Lady Anne bringing her her sewing stuff was, um, I'm sorry, a super weak plot device yeah. because that would not have happened. No, like no, yeah. like we just need. We all know the like you. <laughs> we're <Jordan's> mad. <laughs> I am mad, but okay. But readers, listeners, you you know that we don't do books without a happy ending. So yeah. we're we're heading towards a good ending. Yeah, it's going to resolve. That's the kind of books we like to read. Mm -hmm. However, like this was done so the story could resolve. Yeah, and there could have been a different way that it went about. <gasps> we can talk about it at the end somehow remind me about this because I have a fun alternate ending that would be more emotional. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to spoil it now for people listening because if they haven't finished the book, I would be spoiling the ending now, which I might even be spoiling it right now by saying this. We keep stumbling on fanfic ideas. Uh, we do. We should write some fanfic. We fanfic. should. We'll just, I don't want to be ashamed anymore. We should just write fanfic. We're going to write fanfic. Yeah. Then. Yep. Huh. That was fun. Because why not? Not another heroine. We're not in high school Fan anymore. Fiction channel. <laughs> <laughs> Be a good way to have outreach. Huh. If there's any fan fiction you'd like to see. Yeah. Let us know. Or if you know anything about writing fan fiction, please let me know. Uh, we need to settle on one. We'll do <laughs> that's a, fair. a joint effort. We could do multi-genre. We're at... This is just a precursor of us turning into like fantasy romance writers. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start with fan fiction, and then ten, fifteen years down the road, we'll have we'll have a book maybe out. eventually one book. Mm. <laughs> we'll come back to this point. Alternate ending, right here. I'll keep it in my pocket. We'll probably forget about it. Find it in six months, uh, and it's all like fuzzy from sitting in your pocket like candy. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Sorsha in the cell in the dungeons. Lady Anne gives her her stuff. Uh, Richard, though, obviously comes down to, like, gloat as well and often. And he says that this, like, judge justice guy is coming um, to help serve on the, like, trial for her. Uh, like, a religious person. I don't know, like, a justicar? Justicar? Is that I a word? I've never heard that word before. Maybe I'm just making shit up. Uh, some kind of religious judge guy. Uh, and they're going to hold a trial, air quotes, heavy air quotes around trial. And uh, that this particular justice who's coming, like, always agrees with Richard. And they're, like, longtime friends. So, like, he's basically saying she's fucked. Um, Richard also reveals in a very dramatic uh, revelation that drum roll. He's been, oh, there's no. Here's, here's the drum roll. <laughs> uh, he's working with Unag. Fuck this whore. What? <laughs> Uh, sorry. I agree. That was violent. <laughs> I just, I see, I have a, like a visceral reaction when I see yeah, her name. It's true because, uh, this crazy bitch. So she, uh, was the one that helped do the little rock side incident that killed John. John. I wanted to say not John, Jack. I almost said Ben, but yeah. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. White person, average name. Also <laughs> that rock slide event is very relevant to book two. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh. Exciting. Wow. I want to, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, rock slide incident. And uh, Richard says that he plans to burn Sorsha at the stake for her crimes. A bit dramatic, a little witch trial throwback there. And in exchange for information on Lord Colum's troop, troop movement, so Sorsha's dad, Unag's husband, um, that's what he's going to get in return for killing Sorsha so that he can take over their lands as his own. Uh, dun, dun, dun. And then uh, it gets worse. Richard reveals another horrible truth. Uh, Simon had overheard Richard talking with Iman, um, Ellis's dad, Liam's betrothed, uh, who's also neighbors with the Seven Waters family or whatever. Also relevant to book two. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, Richard, uh, once he found out that Simon overheard him, uh, he's like, okay, we need to have Simon like offed. Uh, but Simon disappeared before he could do anything. And so Richard is like, oh, he probably died anyway. I'm just going to tell everyone he's dead. Tie up that loose end. That's really fucked up. He had this whole monologue where he was just revealing all this fucked yeah, up shit. So <laughs> another point that's very unrealistic is the villain coming to yeah. confess all his crimes <laughs> to the victim. Like, yeah, because that really happens in anything but a James Bond movie. Yeah, like, and it always works out, you know, 
mm. that the superhero comes back and yeah so so to recap richard is the reason simon got captured and disappeared in mm -hmm. the first place he is the reason that like all the shit is going down between like the tribes in ireland and mm -hmm. the britons and yeah basically he's the overarching asshole the villain the bad guy the bad guy <laughs> Yeah, and so uh, Sorsha is just suffering in the cell until the day of the trial comes. It's obviously, if you've not, you know, caught it by now, uh, it's a huge setup, totally fake. And Richard calls all these like crazy witnesses who come in and they're like, oh my God, I've seen her do this like crazy witchcraft shit. She was like dancing naked under the full moon the other day, like <laughs> crazy. I'm pretty sure they actually bring that up in the trial. I think they do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just like crazy shit. And obviously Sorsha can't defend herself. Um, but thankfully, so the original crazy justice guy who's like best friends with Richard, who was supposed to come, was like weirdly caught up with some other event or something. And so they got like a more reasonable judge um, who like Richard's super annoyed about the whole thing. But this like reasonable judge is like, um, this whole thing is like kind of sketchy. Like, where is this lady? She's like not talking. He makes a point of saying like this woman can't even defend herself. <laughs> yeah. Like she's obviously can't or won't speak so how can she answer to all of these crimes what's the point of a trial yeah i thought this judge character was super cool i did too because he um he's not unreasonably kind like it's not like he's automatically like oh i need to save this girl it's more like hey i think we're being like a little bit like rushed into this and like is anyone else kind of like weirded out by all these stories that sound kind of fake and he had like 87 million like villagers lined up like it's not not suspicious to anyone else. <laughs> like, I'm not saying she's innocent, but like, um. <laughs> and so uh, he asks Orsha if she can explain herself. And like, obviously, she says, she says no. And he's even more sketched out. And he's like, this feels really fake. Um, but he allows someone to call a witness on Sorsha's behalf. And so they call up Ben. But Ben is missing. Uh-uh-uh. Where could Ben have gone? I don't know. Because when I first read this, I was like, oh, fuck. They, like, killed Ben. Uh, mm -hmm. Ben is not killed, but also where's Marjorie? Yeah, that come on. Yeah. Cause can women speak at trials? Well, uh, I mean, if women can be held at trial. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, Marjorie, come on, step up girl. Uh, but the judge is like pretty annoyed at this point. Cause he like knows the whole thing's fake and he's like, okay, so my final decision is that you guys need to wait until her husband gets back to defend her and like f they can figure it out. Um, because all of this is like super weird and I don't love it and you need to wait. And then he's called away on like separate business to go like figure something out, which felt like staged by Richard, um, because of this next part. Because Richard is like, uh, yeah, we're not actually going to do that. Um, and so he decides to like go through and say that both he and the justice have decided unanimously uh, amidst all the evidence that Sorsha is obviously guilty and she needs to be burned alive at the stake. Nice. Like, <laughs> as if there isn't enough dark, depressing, yeah. sad things that this character has gone through. Let's throw in like a traditional witchcraft <laughs> burning. <laughs> burned alive. Uh, and so Sorsha frantically tries to finish the last shirt um, before, you know, she's set to be executed. And I think it's at like sunset or sunrise the next day um, on the day that she's going to be burned. Uh, the last shirt is still missing a sleeve despite her like crazed full send attempts to finish. And so she's put up on this like pile of wood and she realizes that like it's really now or never. Uh, she probably needs to call her brothers because like, again, she's about to be burned alive. And so she kind of calls out with the mind speak or whatever. And uh, at the last, very possible last second, like she can feel the heat from the fire on her legs. Uh, the swans fly down and Sorsha fits their shirts on. Like they land at the little <laughs> like stage she's at. It's like this, the way they describe the, the stake that she's being burnt at. It's like this very ceremonial raised above platform yeah. thing. So everyone can like watch, which is so fucked up it's very fun and then all the little swans they fly down oh. and are just like all around her like flapping their way. wings <laughs> i think she even describes them as being like totally freaked out and like squawking and stuff and it's like that is so chaotic mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so they're all obviously freaking out because they're on top of this like giant fire pit um but nothing's happening as sorsha puts on their shirts and unfortunately well there's a there's a problem oh yeah finbar isn't there yeah they're missing a swan 
I'm missing fucking his Finbar. I, I know, know you like Brett. Finbar, but like, come on. <laughs> you got to wait till the last second. He needs a dramatic entrance, apparently. Uh, because at her feet, so they're still waiting for Finbar. Everyone else has their shirts on. Sorsha sees Red pop out from the crowd with Ben. And who's behind them? Simon. Simon's back. Woo woo, Simon. Um, and she's ecstatic because she's like, oh my God, you know, Red found his brother. Like everything's like not so bad. Um, but also like this is kind of sad because now they're both going to watch me burn alive not pleasant, but, um, he's reaching out to her as if he's going to like climb this bonfire that's half on he's fire. He's like <laughs> shoving his way through the crowd. Like this is a big dude. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm coming home to, but like, what is get happening? the fuck out of my way. He's like throwing people, like trying yep. to make a way through this crowd. Uh, and everything seems like it's going to be like kind of okay until Sorsha looks up into a castle window to see a bow aimed Oh, right at him. <laughs> my God. This scene. I, ugh, yeah. I just, right, right. Yeah. It feels, yeah. Because oh. remember, so Finbar, I think he's off in the distance. So he's like circling down, trying to find a place to land. But Red is about to get murdered right in front of her. And so Sorsha makes a decision. Well, she does. I mean, she doesn't make a decision. She just reacts. That's fair. Uh, in her soul, she makes a decision. Yeah. <laughs> And so despite her brothers not having turned back yet and Finbar not even having a shirt on, she calls out to Red to warn him and he's able to um, kind of move out of the way a little bit and he takes a arrow to the shoulder instead of immediately dying. Like she screams his name. Yeah. But caveat, just before all of this happens, like the last shirt that she was holding on to is kind of like ripped uh -huh. out of her hands oh i forgot about magically this. by the yeah. wind by the helpful fucking wind <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere the wind can do things mm -hmm. <laughs> now we have officially entered fairy tale land yep a little bit mm -hmm. aren't you gonna continue nope what nope we'll leave it there <laughs> so the shirt is out because she doesn't know like the shirt just like got out of her hands mm -hmm. and she's she just makes that split decision to like yeah. yell Red's name. Cause all of this is happening at once. Like we have to tell it in order, but like, this is a super fucking chaotic scene. Okay. So, uh, all of this is happening at once. So the shirt slips on Finbar's head as she's screaming at Red to avoid getting shot. He gets shot anyways in the shoulder. All of her brothers turn back into humans and they're not swans, but everyone is still on top of a bonfire that's catching fire inside a crowd of angry people. And uh, everyone's like, those are people now. What the fuck? Yeah. And these <laughs> not just people, like warriors, like <laughs> yeah. Irish, full warriors. on <laughs> Irish warriors that are like, just watched their sister nearly burned alive. So they're like ready to yep. like tear into this crowd. Yeah. Everything is chaotic uh, if you weren't aware. And so uh, things are happening all at once, but Red kind of jumps up and he takes Sorsha off the pile of firewood and Richard kind of disappears into the crowd. And uh, everything is really chaotic, except uh, to make it more chaotic, Lady Anne shows up looking very tired and dirty on top of a horse. And next to her is a very angry Justice who's like, I literally fucking told y'all that we need to wait. And now she's catching on fire. What is happening? <laughs> so this is like Lady Anne's redemption arc. It, it is. is. And she needed one, frankly. Yeah. But still. It's so satisfying, though, because she has this like kind of like, I don't know how they describe her in the book, but like a tired kind of like she's a <sighs> tired old victorian woman yeah mm -hmm. she's like look what you made me do another taylor swift reference <laughs> <laughs> our entire season could be like characterized by different taylor swift songs it could i'm not even a swifty and it just happens i'm a swifty i know <laughs> uh but yeah lady anne's there and so the justice is there. He's mad. Um, the mob is kind of called off because uh, the justice is like, okay, so I'm angry that you guys lit her on fire, but I need to kind of resolve this giant angry mob. We're just going to call this an act of God and say, you know, her chast godly, you know, troubles have gotten her to this point in God acted upon you know these brothers to end this devil stuff and all the crowd is like what like i guess like this feels like magic but like okay we can call it like a god thing <laughs> and so they're like not really okay with it but they're like okay <laughs> it's kind of like when 
you know, England was like, I believe in divorce now. So we're going to make our own church. <laughs> it's literally the same. It's like, we're just telling people things at this point. <laughs> and so the mob is kind of called off. Everything is like wonky right now. Um, but the brothers are obviously like a little defensive of their sister speaking. They like came back into human bodies and she was being burned alive. Um, and so they obviously like berate Lady Anne and Ben and Red. And they're like, my sister was literally almost burned at the stake under your guys's protection. I'm upset. <laughs> well, and Liam, like the eldest brother and like the most warrior like among them is like, I will destroy you. <laughs> I'm going to fight everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they kind of like pull him into the castle and everything kind of like settles down. And obviously like Lady Anne and Ben and Red are like, we're just going to like give you guys some time to like reacquaint yourselves and maybe like get less mad, hopefully. And so they're all kind of like talking about how they're going to get back and like how they're going to take the castle back from Unag. And Finbar is like off to the side. And so Sorsha kind of goes up to Finbar and she's like, hey, so because she didn't finish the shirt, you know, was missing the whole sleeve, Finbar now has a giant swan arm. <laughs> He's got I was a drunk. full fucking ring. This, this, I mean, it's justice. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I was trying to get through that sentence without laughing, and I couldn't, <laughs> I I couldn't just, do it. He's a dude with a swan wing, but like a giant swan arm. Do you, do you talk about why he's late? No, I forgot. Okay, so this also is a huge story arc in book two. Mm. Um, so Finbar plays a much bigger role in that book. So Finbar was late to arriving because, and this is, this is kind of cute. Mm. So Finbar started a little swan family. Uh -huh. he, so do you remember? Like, I think Oh he, yeah. And that's why he was so fucked up about it. He's like, I left my whole family behind. Well, because like, uh -huh. yeah. So swans, I think mate for life. Oh uh -huh. yeah. And so he like met a little swan lady and then they had a little swan goslings mm. i think that's what you call them oh yeah the little like ryan goslings little, little, little fluffy little <laughs> white swans and so like he knew like in his human soul that he had to come back but like he's leaving his whole family oh my God. and so like he comes back and he's still part swan and like Ugh. the way it's described too is that even in his brain he still has like swan tendencies because he didn't fully transform back oh. so he's got like triggers like dogs like terrify ah. him and he like misses the wild i'm not gonna cry <laughs> i am gonna cry we're, we're gonna cry oh. our little emo finbar <laughs> oh no well so yeah so that's finbar's okay. very sad story well uh now that i'm depressed uh we need to finish our <laughs> and so uh yeah they have like a little you know mm, brother sister moment and obviously his swan family and the love of his life you know is like wow you know sorsha you risked everything for this guy that you love and sorsha's like what love not me i don't know who who because she's like 15 <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. Ugh. nope well, I, I, was, gonna... I wasn't going to bring it up again but it's like <laughs> it needed to be brought up <laughs> uh, but Finbar's like okay yeah like <laughs> dim you are obviously in love mm -hmm. and so Red and Sorsha finally get a chance to talk her brothers are like super passive aggressive about it and they're like no fucking way but then she's like um, I'm a person and I like did all this like suffering for you guys so if you could like back the fuck up for a second mm -hmm. and they're like okay fair um, and so they have like a conversation and it's really like awkward and stilted. And Sorsha tells him uh, about what happened with like Simon and awkward conversation. And Red's like, okay, I'll just like bring you and your family to the coast, um, you know, so you guys can all go home. Like you feel fulfilled your promise. And it's like, you guys are having like some miscommunication problems right okay, now for so no reason. You can, you can sense as a reader, like, it's like it's done really well how much red loves sorsha yeah. like you can feel it in the scene yeah and he's just holding himself back because i don't know like she finally has her voice again and she's yeah. reunited with her family again oh. after three years yeah. and he's just like this is the right thing to do and i'm gonna shut up and be a man and not say anything but like this is the love of my life and i'm just gonna help her walk away <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Katie is having a meltdown I between am. Finbar and Red. I'm it's... like sweaty too. This is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they have a not fun conversation. And then Sorsh is like, oh, like, here's your ring back. You probably want this. Oh, my God. Oh, that's <laughs> so scene. sad. When, he, when she hands the Well, because, okay. Mm. So the problem, the problem is, is that Sorsha still believes that Red only saved her because he's under this fairy oh, spell yeah. like she's having all these like she 
acknowledges, I think a little bit internally, like, oh, I love this man kind of like as much as she can. Mm -hmm. And, but she still thinks that fairy queen is like basically designated him as her eternal protector. Mm -hmm. And she needs to go away so he can be free and live his own life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Classic romance novel miscommunication. Yep. (laughs) Uh, Anyways. So she's like, okay, here, take the ring back. And uh, he's like, well, if it means so little to you and uh, arrow to the heart. (laughs) So the, like the next morning, they all kind of ride to the coast and she says goodbye to everyone, including Simon. And they kind of have this like awkward conversation, super depressing, sad oh, conversation. Because like Simon is like, oh, like my brother yet again got the one thing that I wanted. It's Horsha because okay. he loved her the whole time. Uh, my but soul. also, so are you? Do you talk about Simon? What happened to Simon this mm, whole no. time? Mm-mm. You should. Ooh. It was too depressing. I know, but <laughs> like people need to know because it loops back to one of the earlier stories mm-hmm. that like Simon and. Sorsha we're talking about is that Simon was taken under the hill by the fairy court. Oh shit. And he that's why no one could find him. And mm-hmm. like why he basically disappeared off the face of the planet is because he was in fairyland in the court. And he like tells Sorsha loosely that he kind of recounts the story of like the man who's faithful while he's trapped for like four decades in the fairy court. And oh, yeah. he held on to his love for Sorsha. That's what got him through. And, like, he still <laughs> had her lock of hair that he cut. Oh. Yeah. And so he returned only to see her fall in love with his older brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Simon. Oh, my God. Oh, and also he was miraculously healed. Oh. While yeah. he was in the fairy court of all of his shit that he went through. Like, he yeah. remembers... His memory is spotty. Mm-hmm. He he definitely remembers Sorsha, mm-hmm. but like he doesn't remember everything that happened to him. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was another sad part. Red, when they have that conversation and she hands back the ring, uh, he's like, oh yeah, my brother told me about you. Um, he's You're the only thing that he remembers and he called you an angel. It's like, yeah, my soul is yeah. sad. <laughs> yeah, Red is like, everyone is just miscommunicating and yeah thinking things are happening that aren't it's yeah it's so sad uh so sorsha <laughs> she's saying goodbye to everyone and then she finally realizes red isn't going to come to her so she needs to go to him he's like staring wistfully off into the ocean kind of far away um and so they just stare at each other and then red is like oh i almost forgot and he pulls out a blushing pink and red apple the out apple, of his pocket the apple. <laughs> my soul <laughs> this book will destroy you oh yep in all the good ways but all in depressing ways too mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he gives her the apple and he's also he gives her back the ring because he's like this was meant for you like just take it well he does it in like a, i don't give a fuck about this ring yeah. anymore anyway it's like, like i'm gonna the ring. throw this away if you don't take it <sighs> i'm i'm so tired <laughs> this is so sad <laughs> but um sorsha kind of has like a a moment and she's like she doesn't say anything but she just like touches his heart and then she runs away uh so the family returns to seven waters and things are almost like abandoned is like kind of how it's described like there's no guards where they should be and so they're kind of like a little bit like oh no like things have not gone well but they find donald who i think we talked about at the beginning he's like the master of arms he's the one that um lord colum fired yeah essentially. yeah so he came back and he's like, I heard all this bad shit was happening in Seven Waters. So like, how could I not come back? Like, this is my home. And so he explains that probably right at the same time that the curse broke, Unag ran away with uh, their brother. Um, I don't remember his name. Uh, something very gaelic Uh, But they ran away. And- Which brother? Like Colm's brother? Uh, no, Unag oh, and Colm's son. son. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And their father is kind of like a shell of who he used to be because obviously now that he doesn't have like the enchantment from Unag, he's like fucked up. And so everything's going to shit. Um, But the brothers kind of immediately take up work and sources help healing the villagers and things are kind of like slowly turning back to a tentative kind of normal, normalcy kind of. Um, Their father kind of sorts to come back to himself too, but it's really clear that Liam is kind of like the main guy he's running the show yeah 
And so um, this kind of continues for a couple months. I, I actually think it's kind of a long time because I think she turned 16 mm -hmm. um, before this next scene happens. And so things are kind of back to normal, but they're all sitting around the fire in the kitchen on like a cold night. Uh, when all of a sudden, the uh, guards burst in with a captive. And Not like, another captive. <laughs> full circle back to the beginning. Sorsha immediately freezes up because she recognizes this man immediately. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so cute. cute. <laughs> and uh, the man, he's like blindfolded or he has a bag over his head or something. And he's like, I'm here to talk to my wife. Like, where is she? Where's Jenny? Uh -oh. <laughs> and everybody is like, who are you? Who's Jenny? You don't have a wife. Like, what the fuck is going on? You're interrupting my, you know, nice dinner. Who the fuck are you, Britain? You're a spy. Except her father pipes up, which is a crazy moment because he's obviously been like going through his own shit. And he says that he's very tired and it's a cold winter night and we've all just been here exchanging stories and you kind of ruined the mood. Um, how about you entertain us with a story? And so Red is like, I will tell you a tale. He's like the tall, dark and like silent type. This is, oh my god, so, this is like, so emotional. Lot. He's still blindfolded, by the way. He can't see anything. Uh, and so they put him on a little stool. And Sorsha's about to say that she's like there. And her brother, I think Connor, like mind speaks to her. And he's like, just let this guy say what he has to say. And then you can make a decision. But like, you need to hear him like speak from his heart or something. And uh, speak from his heart, he does. <laughs> so Richard kind of tells, it th or Red tells the tale of like him his family, uh, his brothers, his lands, everything that happened with Sorsha and Richard and all the, you know, craziness. But he also includes all of these fucking like cute tidbits. I'm going to cry. I just, I just, <laughs> I didn't see it until I scrolled a little bit and oh you my God. quoted it and oh my God. Yeah. So these are some of the ones that I liked and they go from uh, kind of cute to like, I'm going to rip my soul out. Without her, I have no life. Uh, another one, he dared not risk frightening her away for if he lost her, he lost everything because he's talking in the third person. Um, and then this next pick. Okay. He could not find the words to say goodbye. He faltered. He had wounded her, speaking from the pain of his spirit. He had sworn that he would not hurt her, but he had. He would have told her. He would have said, it matters not if you are here or there, for I see you before me every moment. I see you in the light on the water, in the swaying of the young tre trees in the spring wind. I see you in the shadows of the great oaks. I hear your voice in the cry of the owl at night. I'm going to cry. You are in the blood of my veins, in the beating of my heart. You are my first waking thought and my last sigh before sleeping. You are, you are the bone of my heart or the bone of my bone in the breath of my breath. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like these could have been wedding vows. Oh my. Oh, yeah. It kind of was in a way. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm emotional. <laughs> this is like one of those TikToks where it's like, uh, he says illy, but, uh, you know, read from this book said, <laughs> you are the breath of my breath. Now, now imagine it in like Tom Hiddlestad's voice. Oh, God. I am not okay. <laughs> So obviously, you know, Sorsha being a living, breathing woman of, you know, sound mind, uh, she's immediately like, holy fuck. And then to add to it, Red says that he left Harrowfield to his brother because he has no intention of going back to a life without Sorsha slash Jenny because he's not going to take her where she lives. He's not going to bind her. I can't even talk. This is so fucking so he, emotional. Yeah. So he's like, <laughs> I recognize that this is the daughter of the forest and I need to be where she is. Oh, and so he left everything to be with her. And everyone is like, God damn. Like, I don't know if I would do that. Like, Jesus. Okay. Like the guy talked, he said some things, um, but they're all like, okay, Sorsha, it's your decision in the end. Like you suffered for us. Like you get to decide like what, and obviously what is her decision? <laughs> so Sorsha walks up. He's obviously still blindfolded, uh, red. And so, uh, with the I'm freaking out. I love this scene so much. <laughs> and so, uh, Sorsha has been wearing the ring obviously. Cause she's like, I can't not, I miss him. Um, and so he's blindfolded and she puts the hand that she has the ring on, on the back of his neck. And he's immediately like, untie my hands. Like, this is my wife. And they have this like kind of awkwardly intimate kiss, like in the kitchen in front of everyone. Uh, when they break for air, uh, nobody else is there. So it's like, okay. And then that, 
into a like much more intimate moment, not in front of anyone in uh, Sorcerer's rooms. Um, but everything is happy, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> this is the first time they were like intimate. Yeah, which is like the first time they kissed. The first time, yeah, yeah. which is good because she's sixteen. Uh, and yeah. he's like 23 <laughs> and also her history yes um which okay so i wanted to i meant to take a note but it kind of felt odd to me when you're reading it because um like did they have to be that intimate to like share this moment of like overarching love you know what i mean like it kind of rushed from like them having their first kiss or second kiss almost first kiss to like it felt we're gonna like, have sex <laughs> yeah so okay by the way the book is done oh yeah <laughs> that was the end the end <laughs> um but yeah so there is a very like quick very um light sex scene at the end uh -huh. between the two of them it's and like it, a fade to black i think is what it's called yeah pretty much and it just wasn't necessary no. it's like it was required as a throw-in yeah that's what i didn't love about it because it's like I feel like she would still feel questionable about it. Like she loves him and he even says something kind of wonky. He's like, um, something like weird out of character. It's like, I can't not be with you or something like implying that they're for sure going to have sex. And she's like, yeah, I know like, this is fine. Like, but like, just go slow. But it's like, yeah, uh, like he should have been a little bit more like he's shown through the book that he's more careful than that. And he's just like, I have to have you. It's like, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's it was also 16 and gone through like crazy amounts of trauma. Like, maybe let's take a step back. <laughs> it's weird because, like, this doesn't track like a romance novel, it doesn't. Mm, it's mm -hmm. very much just a straight fantasy. Yeah, uh, the romance plot line is secondary. I could see that. Yeah, because um, what's the standard if the story stands by itself without the romance? It's a fantasy. I, I think so. Yeah, but. That said, the story doesn't work without a romance line. Mm -hmm. And it's like it didn't fulfill enough of its romance line needs throughout yeah. the book. So they just rushed it at the end. Which is crazy, though, because like after that whole fucking like story, him revealing his soul, like that felt like more of an emotional wrap up than them actually having sex. Mm -hmm. So it felt kind of unnecessary. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would be curious on the like editing and publishing decision of including yeah. that scene because the book is long enough without it. Oh, yeah. Um, I wonder, I don't know. It's also like an adult book. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's no new age. There's no YA yeah. elements in this. This is a straight up fantasy novel yeah. geared towards an adult audience. And maybe that's a factor. I could see that. But it felt unnecessary. Like there was enough like emotional resolution without that because I feel like a lot of authors kind of rely on sex to be the emotional like wrap up. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this didn't need it. So it felt kind of out of place. So I am I'm nearly done reading Son of the Shadows, mm. which is book two. And it's very the romance line is stronger throughout the book. Mm. So it's the same kind of function as in it's like secondary to the main plot. Mm -hmm. But like you get a sex scene pretty early on in the book and it's a little a little bit more graphic than what we have here. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if maybe the author like wanted a stronger romance line throughout mm -hmm. perhaps and then scaled it back. I can see that. Because the second book definitely feels stronger in that department and mm. more natural too. Like mm -hmm. it, it feels like it hits at the right point, mm. kind of. Maybe she just like found her pacing with the second one versus the first one. Because mm -hmm. I feel like some authors do kind of uh, not struggle with their first book, but the pacing is always like a little bit kind of awkward. <laughs> and then their second one is either like a flop or it's like, I aced this. I figured it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, the thing in my pocket, um, not covered in lint and left she there for months. She just pulled something like <laughs> out of her imaginary pocket. Like Finbar, if he, if she didn't finish the shirt at all and Finbar was still a swan. Alternate ending. Oh. Mm hmm Well, they would have all still been swans. Would they have been? Yeah, they all brothers had to change at the same time. But how does it... How does it work if it if she didn't finish it, though? You know what I mean? Well, outside of the sleeve issue, like, this shirt just couldn't be worn at all. Yeah. Like, she only finished, like, a little patch. I don't think it would have worked. None mm. of them would have changed. So it has to be, like, majority of a shirt? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, because, I mean, you can make a shirt with, like, is it a t-shirt or is it a long sleeve shirt? <laughs> That's <Like>, fair. <laughs> is it a tank top? <laughs> That would be very weird to see a person with like two swan arms because you wouldn't be able to do anything. You don't have thumbs mm -hmm. or fingers. 
Anyway, alternate ending. Oh, yeah, that Finbar is just still just a swan. a swan, but mm-hmm. all the other brothers change. Mm-hmm. Well, Instead of the, like, magic wind helping. He could have gone back to his swan family. Yeah. See, it would be, it would be, like, an emotional sad ending, and then you could have a scene at the end where, like, Connor's, like, you know, they see two swans in the little lake, and they're, like, don't be sad, little sister. Uh, Finbar may not be with us, but he's with his other family. And she's, like, <laughs> sad. That would have been cute. Yeah. I could have seen that. Yeah. I feel like Finbar deserves better. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not a huge Finbar fan. Fair. But he, he does kind of redeem himself in the second book. Oh, interesting. Yeah. it's See, I just got to read the second one. Goddamn, add my Sorry. TBR list oh, again. I know. It's already, it's already long <laughs> enough. But that's... So thanks for sticking with I us know. through Daughter of the Forest. That this, was long and emotional. There's a lot going on in this book. Yeah. I mean, but it's so good. I, It's... It is. It's amazing. Like mm-hmm. I love the writing style. It's the. It's beautiful. Yeah. It just. It's not one of those stay up late to read books. I could see that. It's a little hefty for that. Yeah. yeah. But also, this is perhaps my one major complaint mm-hmm. about this book is that the heroine isn't as like you can't relate to her mm-hmm. as much. It's kind of like she's a shadow character, yeah. and you're just observing all the other players. I could see that. This is in the first person, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if it would feel less like that if it was in the third person. Maybe. So you could see some people's, like some of the other characters' perspectives of Sorsha. Mm -hmm. Or even like, uh, because I feel like it's easier to talk about Sorsha's actions when it's not like I am doing this. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could get like more of a personality. Because she definitely didn't really have have a personality per se made more difficult by the fact that she's suffering the entire fucking yeah, book oh my god like, <laughs> god like what when can you have a personality if like your entire world is defined by how much you've been yeah. hurt yeah and like how do you figure out who you are because mm-hmm. you can't you're just constantly reacting to and fucked up shit <laughs> think shit kicks off when she's 13 I know. that's the other part that i don't love about this because like what was the intent behind having her so young well, I think it's that whole historical. I just hate it. No, I hate it. No, <laughs> like, I hate. I hated that about uh, George R. R. Martin, uh, mm-hmm. the Song of Fire and Ice, or whatever. It's like, why did they need to make uh, uh, what's her name's character like twelve when she marries Cal Drogo? Like that. Seems- oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't love that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so, but yeah, that was agreed. A roller coaster of emotion. <laughs> I think that will be. We probably won't touch on any of the other books in this world. So there yeah. are there are like six or seven other books Whoa. that take place in the Seven Waters like mm. world, and there mm-hmm. it's like a family dynasty style. Oh, okay. Series. Um, but Son of the Shadows will be a pick of the week. Ooh, exciting! So stay tuned for that. Hmm. Well. 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 Well, 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 dolphins are whales. (laughs) Full circle. (laughs) From our shelf to yours. We'll see you on the next page. (laughs) Hi, readers. If you'd like to help us pick our next book, send us a message on Instagram. Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday on Spotify, Amazon, or Apple Music. Thanks for listening.